All right, so, uh, philosophy. It's been a little while. Um, all right, so, I was considering a concept lately, uh, or I have been considering a concept lately and how to talk about it, and then an interesting uh, example occurred to me, uh, which is uh, the, I guess, the explanation, my, that's my explanation for the title of this video. Uh, it's the Disney movie, um, I believe it's called The Lorax, but I know it's, it's like the Disney sequel to Horton Hears a Who. Um, and the thing is about that movie is that it's a, uh, well, uh, that movie is that it's a perfect example, well, okay, it's a very good example of, I don't know what to label this concept, but it's an example of people doing something of a 180 on uh, their views and then deciding con unconsciously, I suppose, that that has always been their view. Um, and... I guess O'Hare would be the best way to view this. For reference, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't think I'm going to spoil it, but I think it's been out for like a couple of years now. So, I mean, it's a Pixar movie, so it's as good as movies for that audience can be, uh, which is to say great if you're a kid, uh, an interesting experience if you're an adult, and uh, a pretty good movie all around. So, go watch it if you want to. Um, but the, uh, in it, the, I don't know what to call him. Well, O'Hare, of course, is his name. I, uh, so this O'Hare guy who I guess is like the mayor maybe, but he's also like running a whole bunch of businesses. So he doesn't, I mean, it's a Disney movie, so I can understand. I'm, I think I might be adding things to this character, but to be fair, Disney is too. They plopped him in there just kind of as a general antagonist, but within, or it's Disney, I think it might be Pixar. I know Disney owns Pixar, whatever. Um, I'm going to call it a Disney movie just because that's a kind of safe bet. Um, so within it, he's still, it's still, he's still a Disney villain, which is to say he's not a bad person. He's just antagonist to the protagonist we're given. Uh, which is fine. Uh, my problem with it occurred when I realized uh, in the movie, what you see is... Uh, is it still a movie if it's an animation? Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Um, in the movie, um, he, the people, in the beginning, they're singing this... I think it's even how you open up to the movie, how they're singing about how happy they are. I mean, to be fair, it's got several songs in there, so... I don't think it's actually supposed to be considered part of the world that they're singing this. It's just to point out that these people are happy. They're in this world where there isn't plants, really. Uh, everything's made of plastic or whatever that material was. It's made out of Disney uh, cartoon material, which is to say it's all bubbly and, like, round. But it were anyways, they were happy. They were singing about how happy they were. Uh, and it was all pretty much run on by this O'Hare guy, who, as far as I could tell, nowhere in the movie was he a dictator. He was just kind of a businessman acting like a businessman would. Um, which is to say, more money, the better. And, you know, market. the market determines what people need, and what people need is what should happen within the society, etc., etc. Um, but in that movie, I realized that uh, at the end of it, you hear these, he's suddenly the main antagonist. I mean, they gave, they gave him the most obvious appearance, uh, as a concept. If you haven't seen the movie, he sounds like a decent character, but like Google, uh, O'Hare from the Lorax, uh, go to Google Images and you'll see, they, they made him like two feet tall with a really weird haircut and like a permanent smirk. So he's not exactly... He's an obvious antagonist, but it it occurred to me that like people 
this is a great example of people turning around. It's a simplified example to be true, but you know, it's better than me coming up with a hypothetical here that would take five minutes to explain and maybe one out of 50 people would understand it. Um, in that movie, they start out singing about how happy they are, how great life is, and how they're thankful to this O'Hare guy. And at the end of the movie, he's the obvious antagonist, even though if he really were a true antagonist, I mean, to be fair, I'm viewing this with my adult mind, not with my, like, this movie is meant for, or at least this movie is made so that, like, four-year-olds can watch it without having nightmares. But if he really was a true antagonist, he'd be a dictator of that city thing that they were in. Uh, he would rule it hardly, uh, harshly, but as far as I can tell, like, citizens are free to leave, I didn't see any point when he was a dictator, he, uh, he didn't force anyone to use his products, they freely bought them, and for that matter, they had the money to freely buy them, so there's no slaves, He's ju they're just employees, and not even that. Honestly, I was, when I was watching that movie, or when I was rethinking about that movie anyways, when I was watching the movie, I turned my brain off. I'm not really much of a critic when watching Disney movies. Um, but when rethinking about that movie, it occurred to me that, that the society they're in is actually really, really nice uh, before the trees. I, I'm sure it's fine after the trees too, but I was thinking about it like they're pretty much in a capitalist utopia. Uh, they've got basically one business which apparently provides all of its needs, uh, all of their society's needs. Uh, it just so happens their society needs clean air, but I mean, if you can manufacture that somehow when a society needs it, you might as well. Uh, not to say that I, you know, there was a point when they made the character, like, sell bottles of air, which was like, okay, Disney, yeah, we get it, he's the antagonist. But, um, well, the thing is, uh... By the end of the movie, instead of singing about this utopic, wonderful society they were in, they were singing about how awful it was, and how for all these many years they've wanted trees, they've wanted plants, even though the only character who up until that point had shown any interest was the fe was the main female uh, love interest, if you can call it that, Disney movie once again, so like there's a kiss on the cheek, I think is the climax of that relationship. Um, so, you know, eh, the main love interest w girl and then the protagonist only in order to interest her. Uh, so, you know, and then, but then suddenly the whole society needs it, needs these tree things, which is fine, but it occurred to me that it's a great example of people, of an individual's consciousness taking over themselves and then deciding that that consciousness is themselves. Uh, it, this concept was first availed to me, uh, when I first read, uh, the book was called Xenocide by Orson Scott Card. Uh, I don't know when I first read that, but several years ago, uh, and in the book, uh, I think it was the Hive Queen who said something like, uh, that humans are constantly evolving, and it's only the, and it's inherent within us that we constantly evolve, that our minds constantly change, but by the same nature that we, um, that we, it's that, it's that humans constantly change ourselves. It, unconsciously, I think is implied, but we're constantly changing ourselves, but by the nature of those changes, once we have changed ourselves, we have to think of ourself as we currently are as being how we always were. Um, there, it was actually my, uh, all right. Um, a good quote for this, uh, which was actually my senior quote and is to this day, I don't want to say my favorite quote, but it's certainly, I'll say in the top three, don't ask me to like say which, what the top three are. It's just, it's super relevant right now. And I, ver and I liked it. And I liked it when I was deciding my senior quote because it was extremely relevant to that, to, like, coming of age. Uh, and this is Orson Scott Card from Ender's Game, his most popular selling book. I think I'm, yeah, there was an awful movie made about it. I mean, it was fine, but I didn't like it. Um, you know, it's the old book is better than the movie conundrum. Um, so, 
the quote is, Never in my entire childhood did I feel like a child. I felt like the same person all along, the same person that I am today. Uh, and that was my senior quote, although the uh, yearbook club screwed it up, and whatever, that's a different story. Um, you'd think they could just type it down as I sent it to them, but no, we've got to change it. It's not like it's a quote or anything. All right. Um, so the... Uh, it's, I think that quote really pulls out what I'm trying to explain here, and it's that, all right, here, I'll give an example of this. Um, imagine you yourself right now, okay? It's pretty easy to imagine because you're thinking from that perspective right now. Um, so, you, your, you how you are. Now, think of a place you've never been to, never been to. Uh, I'm going to pick a random place, but maybe you've been there, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to say, hmm, ah, I know, the Italian Alps, uh, apparently a fun place, but I've never been there. Uh, so I've never been to the Italian Alps, me as I am right now. So we'll say in this hypothetical situation, I go to the Italian Alps and then I experience the Italian Alps. Maybe I go skiing or something like that and I have a fun time of it or I have an awful time of it, but I go to the Italian Alps and I see them. Um... Am I the same person who went to the... Am I the same person right now in this non-hypothetical world as, my, as that version of myself who went to the Italian Alps? I'm not. Because me, I've never been to the Italian Alps. So if I were to go there, I wouldn't be able to perceive anything of it. Because I'd have to ma be myself exactly as I am. I'd just be bumping into walls. Except I couldn't even bump into the walls because that would tell me that walls exist. I couldn't even experience the getting to the Italian Alps without being a different person, because that is a person who is me, plus an experience uh, going to, uh, being at, and coming back from the Italian Alps. So I have incorporated that and presumably changed my fundamental view, even uh, just by a hair, uh, during that time in the Italian Alps. And, and yet, I have to view myself, I would, at that time, I would view, after coming back from the Italian Alps, and while there, and while going there, I would view myself as being the same person that I am now, before I've gone to the Italian Alps, even though I'm clearly not. Uh, it's a whole different discussion as to why we have to view ourselves as the exact same people, rather than a constantly evolving being, which it can only ever be described as itself in the now, you are not formally yourself, and you are not going to be yourself, at least not in the uh, self that we think of, which I think tends to come down to the mind. The mind is constantly evolving and constantly rebuilding itself, uh, but for some reason we have to view ourselves as always having been ourselves. Uh, if you want to think of it like this, think of it as an inheritance line uh, with old kings. So a king gives his kingdom to his kid, his kid grows up, becomes the king, and gives their kingdom to their and gives the kingdom to their kid and so on and so on and each time the kid is inheriting the kingdom each king builds some stuff they let some stuff degrade they go to some wars so they conquer some stuff they uh, l lose some wars so they uh, lose some stuff so each time the new king when the new king steps in they inherit a different kingdom but they still have to view it as the same kingdom in order to rule it. They rule it as the previous ones did, and they are still the king of that kingdom, even if the kingdom is fundamentally different, even if only by a hair. So each time you do anything, your mind is changing by a hair and evolving, and you this new mind inherits the body. Uh, you constantly evolve it, even if this new mind has memories of the old mind, Here's one way to think of it, another one way to think of it. Um, think of something in your past. You regret it. Maybe it was a big thing, maybe it was a small thing, but it's something you did where you think back on it and you're like, oh, I was such an idiot, I should have done that. But you couldn't have done that because the version, the person who was, had your name and body, uh, or what would later become your body, uh, were, that person did not have many of the experiences, many of the no, much of the knowledge that you have. So it was not you doing it, because if you would not have made that choice, or at least uh, you would not have made that exact choice, or at least you would not have done it for the same reasons. 
So uh, that was not you making that stupid choice. So, yes, uh, this O'Hare thing, uh, I think is a very obvious and simplified, but very uh, good example of this uh, concept. The people in the beginning, which as far as I can tell, the beginning is like maybe a couple days, maybe a week before the end. Uh, so very short time, uh, they go from happy and joyous about their lives in this utopic uh, city of capitalism to uh, all being hippies who want to hug the trees. I mean, I'm nothing against hippies, but, you know, that's what it becomes. They go from a society with no plants whatsoever to, oh my gosh, there need we all need plants and nothing else. Plants are what's necessary. Uh, I've got nothing against that. It's just, that's a society, that's a group of people doing it on a societal level. And the thing is, I think that if you looked at that society in hindsight of them doing that, you might see things in hindsight, as would the people, might see things in hindsight as like, oh, that was actually bad. I think, that, uh, I don't want to draw back to the Nazis, because I know a lot of people like to, well, whenever we're talking about in hindsight, I know a lot of people like to draw back to the Nazis and say like, oh, you can look at all these, well, yeah, might as well. You know, you look at the Nazis, you look in hindsight, and you see all these people, even the Nazis themselves, pulling back from what the Nazis were doing. Um, but at the time, they weren't. It's only that at one point, their minds, a new self uh, inherited their body, uh, and that self was recoiled, uh, or at least uh, was... Uh, not as quite accepting as the previous selves about the things the Nazis were doing, and it started reinterpreting its own memories as, oh no, I wasn't actually okay with uh, the horrible atrocities that I was aiding in. I wasn't actually implicit. It was just because I had to do it. Um, I, it was necessary of me to do it to stay alive. Um, you see that a lot with those trials that happened just after World War II. They view it in hindsight as a morally awful thing they did, uh, and it was only that they had to do it to stay alive, uh, when at the time it was they were perfectly well accepting of that, of doing it. Um, but, well, um, that's, I think it's called hindsight bias. Um, in, things are easier to view in hindsight. But, um, that is similar to this O'Hare thing. If you looked at that society in the Lorax and Horton Hears a Who, you'd look at that society and you'd see all these examples, but not because the examples were actually there, but because viewing that society in with the hindsight of they inevitably turn in this new direction, you'll see all these little sprinklings that led them to this and that uh, this is why. And you know, like all these other people actually did want trees before, but that's only because we know that in hindsight they did this. If they were to completely turn away and stick with O'Hare, you would see the exact opposite. You'd see those same things and say like, oh no, these were factors that pushed them away from trees, away from nature. <sighs> Anyways, I thought I would explain this concept. It's an, it's an odd concept, but I, I realized kind of whimsically that, you know, the O'Hare thing with that Lorax movie was actually a pretty great example of it. Uh, you know, simplified and dumbed down and all that, but, um, so yeah, uh, you know what, I got an idea, uh, I think I should call this video, uh, In the Defense of O'Hare, uh, that doesn't really give away the concept, I usually like to put in the concept in these videos, but if nothing else, that'll draw people in and maybe they'll like the video, so, not like, like button, I don't, you know, I don't expect much on that front, but, you know, they'll see the video, uh, and maybe they'll understand my concept. Who knows? So, yeah, enjoy the generalized outro.